Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to dive into a terminal session so we can do some port configuration on our Kubro Packet Master Network Packet Broker using the command line interface. At the moment I'm using uh, XShell on a Windows machine, but the SSH client you use, the machine doesn't matter, all of these directions will apply. Even if you're using a console serial cable to get to the CLI, all of the directions are going to apply and be the same. Now, I've gone ahead and logged into my Kubro EX32+, Plus, and when we do that, we're greeted with our root prompt. So as far as port, port configuration goes, probably the first thing we're going to want to do is get an idea of what ports we're looking at and maybe what our current settings are. To do that, at our root prompt, we're going to type in config, and we're going to see our prompt change, and that's going to put us in our config menu. To get an overview of all of the ports on our device and some of the current settings, we're going to do a show interface status. And we'll see that this brings up a listing of all of our interfaces with their name right here, whether we have an up or down status on our link, our current duplex and speed. All of the ports should show in access mode. And then we even get the type here, which is going to give us the current transceiver that's in there. So we see we have a 10 gig single mode here, a 1 gig single mode here, 1 gig copper. And if I continue down, you'll notice that I have even some 1 gig multi-mode and 10 gig multi-mode in here. Okay, well, that's a great start uh, getting an idea of what ports are on our device in our current settings. What if we want some more detailed information on any one of these ports? Maybe I want to take a closer look at ETH030 here and get some more information on that. To do that, we're going to do show interface, and then we're just going to put in the name of the interface. So ETH030. And that's going to give me a very detailed um, description of what's going on with this, with this interface. Okay, well now that we've established you know, how many ports we have, what our current settings are, we're going to want to go in there and change some things. So from our config menu, to start making some changes, we're going to type configure terminal. Okay, now next, and here's a useful hint, at any point in time in the command line interface, you can type question mark to get a help menu. So I can see that under this menu, I have whole host of commands. Pertaining to port configuration, I'm going to want to type in the interface command. Interface followed by question mark will show me that I have two options here. I have range and then I have ETH dash, which is really referring to a single interface. Let's start off with a single interface. So I'm going to type in interface ETH and maybe I want to configure that port 30 I was talking about earlier. When we type that in, we'll see our prompt changes yet again, and now we're in a sub-configuration menu for that specific port. Here, if we hit the question mark, we'll see that we have all of the options that we had in the web GUI for configuring this port and more. Um, we have our CRC check and recalculations right here. You can see that we can set a description for it here, our duplex, and our speed, whether the port's active or not, unidirectional was that force TX mode, um, and then, of course, we have many other uh, options in here as well. So let's go ahead and set that speed. Entering the speed command plus a question mark is going to give you the available options or the syntax for setting your speed. Now, all of these options might not apply to your device. For example, on the CX32+, Plus, if I try to set my port to 100 meg, that's not going to work. So doing that, we'll see you know, 100 meg is not a supported speed on this interface, but I can certainly set it to one gig or even 10 gig. Okay, same thing with duplex. We enter duplex and then we select our duplex. Our given options are all right here. Again, all of these might not apply depending on the device that you're in, but I can certainly type duplex full and it'll accept that. Let's say we're doing a CRC check on this port. I don't want to pass error frames, but I forgot the syntax for that. CRC-check plus a question mark is going to show me that simply I enter disable or enable depending on what I want to do. Let's go ahead and enable that. Yeah, on second thought, I don't think I want to check, or I don't think I want to drop error frames on this port, but I definitely want to force the TX mode up unidirectional mode, so I'm going to enable that. 
When I'm done configuring this specific port, I'm going to type PEXIT, and that's going to take me back to my parent config menu. You could also type END here. That's going to take you the whole way back to the root prompt that you started with when you initially logged in. Now, one of the more interesting things uh, I think about using the command line is that if you know what you're after, you can uh, accomplish things much quicker, in my opinion, than you can in the GUI. For example, if I need to configure 15 ports in the web GUI, I have to go to each one of the port dropdowns and then select the options that I want for that port and then save them. Well, what if all of those ports are the same? That gets a little tedious. And that's also where our interface range command comes in. So if we type interface range, and I know I want the same settings on a range of ports, I'm going to type in the first interface name that I'm going to start with. Let's just configure the first 15 ports on this device. So I'm going to type in interface range, eight zero one, then a space, a dash, and a space, and then the last port number that I want to configure. So let's get those first 15 ports. And now you'll see that I have config IF range. Now any settings I make inside of this configuration menu are going to apply to all 15 of these ports, which of course we have the same ones here. So let's go ahead and set all of these to 10 gig full duplex. Sorry for the annoying chimes there. And let's just make sure that those CRC checks and recalcs are disabled. Okay, and now I'm done with that. I'm going to type exit to go back to my parent config menu and then exit one more time. And let's take a look at what I did there. So we're going to do another show interface status. And we should see that these first 15 ports all have the identical settings, which given the transceivers in some of those has caused some of the links to go down. But hey, that's no problem. We can fix that. Okay, so this is... Um, an introduction to port configuration using the command line of the Kubra Packet Master. Again, there are more detailed settings in here that uh, probably would be more specific to a given application, but this is certainly going to get you started. So thanks for watching and take care.